CNN host Don Lemon is catching major flack online for this exchange made on air about colonial reparations. Let's watch. The, those who are asking uh, for reparations for colonialism, and they're wondering, you know, $100 billion, $24 billion here and there, $500 million there, some people want to be paid back, and, uh, and members of the public are wondering, why are we suffering when you are, you know, you have all of this vast wealth? Those are legitimate concerns. Well, I think you're right about reparations in terms of if people want it, though, what they need to do is you always need to go back to the beginning of a supply chain. Where was the beginning of the supply chain? That was in Africa. And when that crossed the entire world, when the slavery was taking place, which was the first nation in the world that abolished sla uh, slavery? The first nation in the world to abolish it. It was started by William Wilberforce, was the British. In, in Great Britain, they abolished slavery. 2,000 naval men died on the high seas trying to stop slavery. Why? Because the African kings were rounding up their own people. They had them on cages waiting in the beaches. No one was running into Africa to get them. And I think you're totally right. If reparations need to be paid, we need to go right back to the beginning of that supply chain and say, who was rounding up their own people and having them handcuffed in cages? Absolutely. That's where they should start. And maybe, I don't know, the descendants of those families where they died at the, in the high seas trying to stop the slavery, that those families should receive something too, I think, at the same time. It's an interesting discussion, Hillary. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Well, let's get right into it. Joining us now to weigh in is Newsweek contributor and business consultant, Denise Long. Denise, I know you're fired up about this subject. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Good to be here. So tell us what you made of this clip. I think you disagree with the guest. Yeah, I think it was a shit show. <laughs> I think it was uh, colonizers and those responsible for exceptional crimes against humanity around the globe to wash their hands and place blame completely elsewhere. So my take on this is that perhaps Don ran out of time, let's hope, and or he didn't have a response to this uh, egregious bastardization of uh, accountability. So for me, as a seventh generation American descendant of slaves, my thought on this is really that all parties are responsible, including if we're able to locate and find the Africans who were responsible for trading uh, their people into slavery, but we also know exactly where to find the, the Brits and those who continue to live high off the hog from slave labor. And it's amazing to me that this woman talks about the 2,000 people who died to make right egregious 300-year history as them getting reparations, because we already know that the British spent what is equivalent to 17 trillion, is it billion, billion in reparations to the slave owners once the slave trade was finally abolished in 1807 in Britain. So they don't get a pass for ending what they shouldn't have been involved with in the first place. Nobody told them to go buy enslaved people. Yeah, this argument is really interesting to me, and I talk about it a little bit in my radar today, that somehow the existence of people who sold other people into slavery cuts off the uh, responsibility of people who actively participated and profited handsomely for, from a slave trade for years. If I were to buy a defective car that someone then recklessly drives into me, the law doesn't say that I'm not allowed to hold a reckless driver responsible just because there was also a, a defect. There's something called you know shared, shared um, uh, liability here, contributing negligence here. Um, the other thing that I do feel like I really must correct is that uh, people have been saying this a lot. England, 100%, was not the first country to ban slavery. Uh, Haiti was. Haiti had a, mm. a slave revolt. It was not ended at the benevolence of the white overlords. Haitians rose up and freed themselves, and as a consequence, has been punished harshly by the international community, which saw that as a real threat to their slavery uh, across the world. That was their a really colonies. bloody incident, uh, though. Yes, it was. They killed all the white people on the island. Yeah, they, they cleared, killed all the people who were enslaving them correct on the island, which happens in war, and it's something that we celebrate in the context yeah. of the American Revolution when we threw off our colonial overlords and Haitians obviously have the right to self-determination and do that as mm -hmm. well. And it's very much celebrated by enslaved people uh, across the world. And it was an inspiration to the abolish movement, abolitionist movement here in the United States. And here's an important point. I want you to respond to this as well. 
you know, after that happened, Haiti paid to France reparations uh, in the amount Hello. of 112 million francs to France. So, I mean, what do you make of this return to this theme that it is the people who were enslaved that have all the responsibility here in terms of um, paying reparations in these kinds of contexts? So France needs to pay that money back with interest. Uh, it's absolutely ridiculous. And we know the ways France has been involved with uh, subverting and uh, oh, let's go ahead and call it assassinating leaders on the African continent um, and how that has also um, affected, slowed, been an, a barrier to growth and development there. Yet there's this narrative going around that people are trying to sell, especially as reparations in America and with CARICOM uh, increases its momentum and its public support, both among the descendants of the enslaved, as well as among regular folk who understand that when you build a nation uh, based on slave wealth and you deprive those people of citizenship rights, wealth accumulation and the like, you are indebted to those people to repair the harm that has been caused if we are ever going to get to a state of peace and reconciliation. And I just want to correct something that I said earlier. I said no one told them to go and purchase slaves. That's actually not true. The Catholic Church was heavily involved, the Church of England and the like, and actually issued uh, papal bulls, letters from the Pope, edicts from the Pope, saying, go forth and colonize Africans, Muslims, and Native Americans, and the rest of the Western Hemisphere in order to take their lands for the glory of their version of Christ. Uh, so there's multiple elements of accountability here, uh, top to bottom, left to right. Yeah, look, I think, but so my hang up we hear with the whole kind of reparations discourse, look, if you can demonstrate that you know, if, if you are a descendant, maybe a, a more direct descendant, a, a child, grandchild, great grandchild, great, great, great grandchild of uh, slaves and and there's a specific, the, those, the enslavers, their descendants are still around and still have wealth in their estate then I could see why maybe you're owed something from them. When you get into the realm of, you no, know, like the entire society owes everyone of a certain ethnicity or some independent of their circumstances, that's when I think most people or many people say, well, now we're just talking about a general like transfer of wealth independent of actual any legacy of slavery. Well, what about the crown, yeah. since that's the topic here? I, I'm not. Def I'm not going to defend the monarchy. I, I wasn't even defending the monarchy. You made me sound like I was defending it because you were defending what that crazy professor said. But no, the crown should end and give that wealth back to whoever. I don't care. But um, so but that's different than what I'm getting at. Go ahead. Let's address that. The entire nation and the entire world, particularly the uh, Western world, which is European, um, benefited from chattel slavery. And if you've mismanaged the wealth that you stole for 300 years in the case of Britain, and then, you know, 100 some odd years, 150 years, or actually 250 years, what am I saying? If in the case of the United States, are we now to write that off because you have uh, wasted the wealth? And the reality is the wealth. The Wealth has not been wasted. They are still very wealthy countries, the United States and Britain. And we know that Britain or the England um, is responsible for seeding the United States here and contributed to the enslavement here. And so it's not just the families who participated in it because the government allowed it, uh, codified it in a way into the Constitution. Think about the Dred Scott decision and, and what that led to uh, eventually with the abolishment of slavery. So yes, the entire country is indebted to the descendants of slaves because there are ways that we could not get justice while our enslaved ancestors were still alive. And it's not just enslavement, it's a lineage of people, specific groups of families, 40 million in the United States of America, who can tie their family back to at least the 1800s in the United States who were under the weight and burden and terror of enslavement, but not just that, the 150 years after emancipation that led to the lynching era, Jim Crow and deprivation of wealth, and we still experience that discrimination today. So it's a lineage-based claim, not an ethnic claim, not a racial claim. It's a specific harm, specific harms that happen to a line of uh, descendants of families uh, currently alive in the United States. 
Mm, that's most certainly the case. I'm happy to share my uh, the papers from my great great grandfather who fought for his freedom in the in the Civil War. Thank you so much, Denise, for joining us for this conversation today. Thank you. Glad to be here. We'll have more rising for you right after this.